People that work on movie sets. What are the most entitled actors you have ever met? Story 1. People who have actually worked on movie sets know better than to badmouth the stars in a public forum. With that said, I do have a story about Rob Lowe. I was an employee in the art department for a film called Knife Fight, tasked with researching elements that would appear on the screen, then creating the necessary content for a variety of props, like newspapers and edited photographs. If I'm completely honest, I wasn't quite as good at my job as I should have been, given that my previous experience with feature films had been limited to script doctoring and coordination work. As such, many of the things that I created had to go through several rounds of drafts and approvals before they were production ready. In short, I put in a lot of effort that probably should have been unnecessary. Anyway, at one point, I assembled a handful of posters that would be visible in the background of a scene featuring Rob Lowe. These had already been reviewed, revised, and revamped a couple of times, so I was feeling pretty certain that everyone would like them. Unfortunately, I have it on good authority, given that I wasn't actually present in the room at the time, that when the actor first walked into the location, he glanced at the posters in question, smirked, and made some commentary on them. Huh, Rob Lowe was reported to have said. That's neat. And then he just went to work, like some kind of professional performer. What an entitled jerk, right? Story 2. I have a friend who works on a lot of movies, so she has worked with a ton of people. From what I remember, here are her thoughts on different people. Jake Gyllenhaal's method acting style and requirements are annoying and strict, so he can often be rude and hard to work with. Lawrence Fishburne initially comes off as a and absolutely hates when you call him Larry, but he can swiftly turn that around to be a great guy and your best friend. Keanu Reeves is everything amazing you'd expect him to be, but because he is so personable, he doesn't have too many intimate one-on-ones with people. Emma Watson is a bit self-involved. Matt Damon is super cool, funny, and intelligent. James McAvoy is stellar to work with, apparently. She also has a huge crush on him. M. Night Shyamalan is apparently an amazing father and one of the best bosses to work for. I've heard several stories about the work he puts into being a great family man. 50 Cent is goddamn hilarious. He was hanging out on set with my friend and a white girl in a kimono walked by and he yelled, Oh sh**, they got the Asian jump off in here. Russell Crowe is apparently super down to earth, but he can get a bit isolated if you catch him while he's focusing. Christian Bale acts kind of like Keanu, but he also can be so focused on his work that he kind of forgets to interact with people. Ryan Gosling is apparently hilarious and lovely. Brian Cranston is also what you'd expect. He's a super nice guy who acts kind of like a father figure to most people. So to answer your question, Jake Gyllenhaal and Emma Watson are the worst I've heard about so far. Story 3. I used to work in a certain job in the movie industry. My whole family still does. There are a few groups of people on set who get to see the talent as they really are away from the spotlight, who get so good at not interacting with them that the stars forget someone is there and this one is one of them. Now in the biz, you get treated a lot of different ways, and most times you just shrug it off and act like a professional because you are being paid really good money to drive and everyone has bad days. Plus, this demographic of people uses substances and alcohol more frequently than most, so you never really know what's going on with them and you never want to burn a bridge for work because the industry can go up or down. Work is not always steady. With that said, the following experiences are about people who are consistent over weeks, months, or years, insufferably rude to multiple people. There is a documented set of data points to show a trend of indiscriminate a holery over time. 1. Chris O'Donnell. Hands down the worst. This guy is literally the worst I have ever seen in the industry. This extremely minor television actor and former model thinks he is not only talented, but divine, and will wonder aloud why lessers are doing something near him. Chris once complained to production that a slightly overweight security guard was assigned to an area near catering. Chris, if you're reading this, you are a pole smoker and your neck is fat. Everyone laughs at you when you are not around, especially production. 2. Helen Hunt. More like Helen Runt. 3. If Helen and Chris got together and got to knockin' hooves, the ground would open up and hell would regurgitate Catherine Heigl. 4. I watched Marissa Tomei yell at a PA who had just slipped and broken his leg in front of her to get out of her way. 5. Jamie Foxx was so racist and mean on Ray that I, a driver, took the meanest, waxiest, smelliest dump in history in his trailer. Extremely unprofessional but it immediately raised crew member morale as everyone knew this big baby came back to the trailer one day to find his toilet with remnants in and outside of it. 6. Steven Seagal 
Imagine forming your entire identity and life's work around being an action hero martial artist, only to end up being a hairy lard. It must be like starting out looking like Pierce Brosnan and Pokemon evolving into Jesse Ventura. Story 4. There are also some really cool people out there. My favorites? 1. LL Cool J. 2. MGK, even if he's just a big pothead. 3. Lindsay Lohan. I haven't seen her in a while. I worked with her back when people really didn't know she had a drinking problem. She pulled the old gray goose in a water bottle move. I thought she was a great person, just had some problems. I hope she found help. 4. Howard Stern and the Stern Show in general. Howard talks about how high maintenance he is, but his staff is very good about preparing you, and he never gave me problems as long as my ducks were in a row. I don't particularly care for his wife, Beth. Seems like she's only nice to you if you're someone. 5. Mark Harmon is the man. Some people who I found not to be good or bad, just strange. 1. Gerard Butler is about 18 years old in his head. 2. Christopher Walken is literally just as insane as you might think. 3. Joaquin Phoenix is like that guy who wants to be your friend, but is impaired by several layers of mental illness. 5. Tom Cruise is a wacko. No surprises there. If Tom decided to talk to you, he would get inappropriately interested in minutia about you. I mentioned I like three creamers in my coffee, and he thought it was just about the most interesting thing he had ever heard in his life. Story 5. I used to work in the film and TV industry. Tyra Banks legitimately will fire some people if they look her in the eye when passing in the hallway. Mostly interns. Ugh. On the plus side, Tom Hanks and David Tennant are genuinely amazing. And Eric Dane. Good guy. Once an actress yelled at one of our new writers and Eric heard about it. He later came by to apologize publicly in front of the whole cast and crew, even though it wasn't his doing. Love that guy. And someone on the crew later tried to poison that actress. So... Story 6. Faye Dunaway, Faye Dunaway, and I cannot stress this enough, Faye Dunaway. I've had dealings with her personally, and can vouch for her entitlement and nastiness, but my friend who works on movie sets has horror stories. Extremely demanding and also picky, she brings her scales with her everywhere and will make anyone catering weigh it up in front of her. She has a no-eye-contact rule, which must never be disobeyed, and she also yells and screams when things do not go her way. Story 7 Bam Margera used to frequent a mall when I was managing a store. He was always cool and never seemed pretentious. One afternoon, he came in with some friends, and they were all obviously either high, drunk, or both. They were in my store, making a scene, being obnoxious, and started throwing around merchandise. Before I could say anything to them, Bam turned around and yelled for them to stop acting like f***ing children and to put everything back where they got it. Like good little peons, they did what they were told. He just looked at me and with a long and tired look on his face, told me he was sorry about them. So yeah, Bam seems to be a good guy. By the way, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more videos in the future. Story 8. Steven Seagal shows up and rejects his stunt double for being too fat, aka a perfect double for him, and selects a stunt double for himself who was much thinner. In fact, it was Star-Lord's double for all those movies. Production had to put Star-Lord in a fat suit so he would look like Seagal and he ends up doing 90% of Seagal's scenes, which is a good thing because it turns out Seagal likes to literally punch stuntmen during choreographed fights and then taunt them if they wince. Also, Seagal got in trouble for flirting with underage girls and bringing outside women on set. Jeremy Renner is on top of a frozen mountain at night and demands chili with no specifications. The crafty then sends the chili with a card of topping options. It takes at least 20 minutes to get to the top of the mountain, no matter what. When it arrives, Renner chews out the crafty assistant, saying he expected chili in five minutes. The crafty assistant fires back at him, telling him nobody's getting anything from base camp to the top of this mountain in five minutes without a helicopter. The crafty assistant is banned from talking to or looking at Renner for the rest of the shoot. That Jeremy Renner story doesn't sound right, but I don't know enough about chili to dispute it. Story 9. Third hand here, so who knows. But a person I know has worked with Kevin Smith, during the filming of Live Free or Die Hard, they were shooting Kevin's scenes. I guess the call time was 7 a.m. Everyone is ready, lights on, sound check, yada yada. No Bruce Willis. Turns out he was at a nearby bar having mimosas. The aide that went to get him was told, I'm John McClane, what are they going to do, fire me? Or something to that effect. To Kevin's estimation, 
90K-ish dollars were wasted in pay, rental fees, and whatnot, waiting on Bruce to be ready to go. Story 10. I was playing a background doctor on an ER-type drama a couple years ago. While rehearsing a scene, one of the actresses said to the performer next to me, Tell him he can't stand there. She was referring to me. I adjusted my position and asked, Is he okay? She said, again to the actor next to me, Tell him I don't care, just stay out of my way. I asked, Is there some reason you're not addressing me directly? And she turned around and walked away. A few minutes later, the scene was shot without further incident. I have no idea who this actress is. She wasn't even one of the stars. Story 11. Saw Kirsten Dunst at a restaurant a couple of times. Once it was with a group of like 10, possibly a little party. Anyway, someone came up and wanted to take her picture, and she very politely and kindly explained that she was there to spend time with her friends and didn't want to be taking pictures that night. It was basically the opposite of entitled. I also saw Andy Samberg at a restaurant once, and his friends stuck him with the bill without so much as a glance at their own wallets. Whatever that might imply about their character or his. Or neither. I couldn't hear their conversation. Maybe they had discussed it beforehand. Maybe he's their employer and it was a business dinner. Maybe he was a total ass and wanted to buy their respect. Mostly, it's impossible to judge a person's character on one interaction or perceived interaction. Story 12. Not that it's any surprise to anyone, but Michael Sarah is such a huge jerk. I watched so many young musicians come up to him during the bob tour and talk about music or gush about how he inspired them, only for him to either brush them off completely, ask them why they're talking to him, or just have security come take them away. Total jerk. Story 13. Have not worked on a movie set, but worked for a cleaning company that was hired by production companies that came to the area to film, Alberta, Canada. We would take care of the homes of some celebs. Tom Hardy was lovely, very down-to-earth and friendly, would walk by us in the house and always greet us, and often talk about the weather and other mundane things. Small talk. His whole entourage was friendly. It was actually quite an enjoyable job, with good pay, easy work, a nice environment, etc., when we cleaned Leonardo DiCaprio's place, we were specifically told not to talk or look at him by the contact person my boss had. We wouldn't have spoken unless spoken to first, but the specific request for it made us uncomfortable. One time, one of my co-workers had a close encounter with Leo in his bathroom. She was cleaning while he was coming in. She jumped, apologized, and said, I'll get out of your way. She quickly gathered up all her cleaning stuff and hurried out. He was totally silent and turned his head away from her. It was weird. And just a quick side note, we had a specific way we'd clean so as not to encroach on anyone needing the bathroom. Leo's bedroom and bathroom were done when we were certain he was up and about or out of the house, and we always went as fast as we could. The previous cleaning company that was there before us was fired because one of the workers said, How are you? Or something like that to Leo. That prior knowledge also made it harder working there. Oddly enough, though, Leo's entourage had a strange curiosity with us that felt uncomfortable in the opposite sense almost like they'd never seen people before, lol. Story 14. I went to school with a guy who wound up co-starring in a feature film. I saw him in the bar one night. He walked up to this table of women and said, so, who wants my autograph? He even had a pen. The women had no idea who he was because the movie he'd been in was some short-run B-movie nobody had even heard of. Insecure people who gain any sort of fame and recognition are the most cringy of all. Story 15. I try to remember that everyone has bad days and good, and my interactions with people on a professional level can be just that, a bad day or a good day. But that being said, working with Jonathan Frakes was so wonderful that at the end of our time together, I nearly turned around and said, I love you, Dad. Everything this kid who grew up wanting to be Commander Riker could hope for. Story 16. Not on a movie set, but was friends with someone whose parents owned a large hotel in a small community. Gordon Ramsay was filming an episode of Hotel Hell at their place. Came over with McDonald's for me and my friend, and Gordon walked into the dining area and said, What have you got there? To which I responded, McDonald's. Then he gave a stern look and said, Throw that garbage away and wait here. A little while later, he returned with Fresh Made Eggs Benedict and was very polite to us. He genuinely cared for the youth. I can see him in the kitchen, shaking his head and cursing McDonald's under his breath while he's cooking. Story 17. My mom's friend did security for concerts. She always told us about how nice the bands were, but Adele was a nightmare. 
Her fans started to line up before her concert outside of the stadium, and Adele refused to do a sound check because she didn't want anyone to hear her for free, and you couldn't look at her when she spoke to you. ACDC was the nicest band she encountered, and the Foo Fighters. Story 18 Not me, and not on a set, but my mom was a cashier at a famous local inn, and a number of celebrities have visited. Billy Ray Cyrus, Michael Jackson, etc. One day, Bill Cosby had showed up and asked for a specific cup of coffee with a bunch of weird stuff in it. Long story short, my mom politely said we don't have that, got yelled at, and was basically forced to go buy his coffee from somewhere else, just so management looks good. Story 19. Had a good friend that was an extra on the set of The Prestige. They were told not to interact with Bale due to his method acting, but he witnessed a child of someone on the set playing X-Men figures with Hugh Jackman. Hugh was Magneto and the kid was Wolverine. Story 20. Not actors, but my mom worked security for Kanye West and said he was lovely, as was 50 Cent. Will Young was a knob. Story 21. Brian Callen, most famous from Mad TV, is a major dirtbag. He had a meltdown and screamed at everyone because a PA didn't get his coffee fast enough. He gave me dirty looks during filming, and I couldn't tell if he was into me or was pissed at me, but it made me uncomfortable. Story 22. My friend has worked on Dr. Phil for years. He has a no-eye-contact rule and is apparently one of the nastiest, most self-absorbed people in the industry. The no-eye-contact rule is because he doesn't want people to realize he's cross-eyed and his eyes are too close together. Story 23. I used to sit next to Billie Eilish in choir up until like less than two years ago when she really blew up. I saw her again when she came to one of our performances last year and she gave me a hug. Anyway, what's so weird to wrap my head around when I see her online or in interviews is that she's the exact same person that I knew her to be all my life. Weird, quirky, always sticking out her tongue and lifting her lips to make weird faces, always making fun of herself and others, in a playful way, but really down to earth. It's so weird seeing the person I sat next to for years literally copy and paste it onto such a high celebrity platform. Story 24. Worked in the business for about 10 years. I found that reality TV stars were the hardest to work with. I worked mostly with stars from Bravo and they were all entitled and horrible. Celebs I've met that were super nice, Rihanna, Mark Hamill, Tony Todd, Peter Dinklage, and Emmanuel Shrieky. Story 25. Some years ago, Flava Flav opened a chicken restaurant in my town. Opening night, I wait in line in the freezing cold like you do to get in to try his chicken. When I get inside, he is running around talking to people and being the Flava Flav you saw on the celebrity shows. Then he heads to the front of the line and starts shaking hands and taking pictures with people down the line. He was about to shake my hand when someone came up and whispered in his ear. He looks at me and says, Hey man, I'm sorry, but it's my son's dinner time. I gotta go make his dinner. He shook my hand and apologized again and ran off to the kitchen. Next, I saw him sitting at a table with his son and was cutting up his food and just being a good dad. 100% nice, cool, personable, and a good dad. Story 26. Not a movie set, but I worked as guest relations manager at the resorts at Disney, and Ariana Grande was just terrible. She completely trashed the Cinderella suite. Apparently, she also caused damage at Universal as well. On the other hand, met several others. The ones that stand out are John Stamos, Chris Evans, and Prince Harry. John Stamos was there on his honeymoon and still made time for fans. Chris Evans was very polite, and when someone recognized him through his sunglasses and ball cap disguise, he was very cordial. His hotel room was a revolving door of women, but when you look like he does, why not? Prince Harry, first thing he'll tell you is, it's just Harry. Extremely down to earth, met him when we hosted the Invictus Games. He cares so much about those wounded warriors. Story 27. Also a TV set, James Corden is an absolute <laughs> Not the funny, happy-go-lucky guy you see on TV. He's actually really hated in the UK. Has a pretty nasty reputation for how he treats non-famous people. Also, the way he sucks up to celebrities on his show is so cringeworthy. Story 28. Opposite story. I met Colin Hanks, the son of Tom Hanks, while filming Orange County. You would expect him to be pretty arrogant and entitled, considering he grew up in Hollywood and his dad was Tom freaking Hanks. Me and my friends had gotten on set since we were in a film club and ran into him while there. He was so nice. He joked around, answered a lot of questions, and was really genuine. 
He laughed when we asked him how it felt being Tom Hanks' son and said it got old being asked that all the time, but he always took it in stride. He is definitely like his father and just an all-around nice guy. Story 29. Jim Carrey's trailer had an AstroTurf roll-up lawn. On this lawn was a picnic table. On this table was a vase. On this vase was a flower. I'm not sure if he makes the Teamsters bring it everywhere they filmed, but I imagine so. I never met the guy himself, but honestly, I respected him for it. If you're living out of a trailer for days or weeks at a time and working the kind of hours we do, making it as livable as possible is a good idea. It's honestly such a minor amount of work to set up compared to all the gear that gets hauled around regularly, I doubt it was a big deal. Beyond that, I've never really run into talent being prima donnas, which makes sense. In this industry, you're only as good as your last gig and your next one. People who are straight up naturally nasty don't last long. If you see footage of someone melting down on set, you should keep in mind we're all working 12 plus hour days, five days a week, and tensions are high. Even nice, good people can often crack in these circumstances, hence why I don't fault anyone who wants a bit of extra comfort. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this next video. The YouTube algorithm really thinks you like it.